All right, welcome to confirmation class. We are continuing our study of the Lord's Prayer. In particular, today we're going to be talking about the petition, give us this day our daily bread. Can I start with prayer and then answer your question, Chase? Yes. All right. Will you guys all pray with me? Gracious God, Heavenly Father, thank you for um, being us, with us tonight. Thank you for this beautiful week that we've had, just the, the sunshine and for the beautiful trees that are changing colors. Thank you, God, for um, just all the gifts that you give us. Help us, O oh Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit to be thankful for all the blessings you give us, but also, Lord, to trust that you are with us, that you will provide and that we need not worry or, or be anxious. And so guard our hearts and minds and keep us in true faith. So we pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. All right, great. Chase, you had a question. Yes, sir. I don't have a pencil. Can I have one, please? You do not have a pencil. That I'm going to chase on that one. Issue. I had my pencil and I was playing with my dog and it fell off. Choose something. We do pencil or a pen? Pencil, if you have a mechanical pencil. If you don't, I don't know. I do not see. You see a mechanical pencil. Yeah, I'll try. There it goes. There it is. All right. All right. So I would like you to take two minutes and find some blank space on your page, maybe in the, the, the margins of your box. Hey, Mason, welcome. Um, and I want you to write down a handful of things that you are thankful for. So in your mind, say, I am thankful for, and write those things down. This is lesson B6. This is letter B6. Lesson. All right, so, so maybe somewhere in this gray box, um, what are some things that you are thankful for? I am thankful for. I can tell you one. Oh, we're, I'm gonna, we're gonna be two minutes, keep writing things down. Twenty more seconds. Write down what you are thankful for. I don't like any questions. I can't. All right. What I like to do is I like to go around the group. And um, we're going to say what we are thankful for one thing at a time. And we're going to keep going around until everything that we are thankful for is listed. And so, um, Isaiah, would you be willing to start? And I'll go to Juliana, Caitlin, um, Addison, Gus, Chase, me, Anya, Mason, and then to Isaiah. So we're just going to go around and around and around and around. Um, with listing things that we're thankful for. Can we say some other people? And if, some, if you have to repeat what somebody else says, that's okay. All right? So let's go ahead and get started. Isaiah, what are you thankful for? Strong faith. A strong faith. Awesome. Juliana? Oh, family. Family. Friends. Friends. Sam and Colby. What's Sam and Colby? YouTubers. All right. Okay, good. Family. Family. Uh, my parents and the rest of my family. Parents and the rest of your family. I am thankful for um, three kids. Anya, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my cats. Cats. Mason, what are you thankful for? Uh, land. Land, awesome. Um, Isaiah, again. Friends. Good. Juliana. Friends. Friends. 
Sports. Sports. Sports, sure. Okay, yes. Friends. Friends. My friends. Friends. Um, I would say I am thankful for my wife, Anya. Thankful for my wife. You're muted. There. What? what are you thankful for? You have another thing. Um, my school. Your school. All right. Amazing. Family. Family. Isaiah. Family. Juliana. Oh my gosh. That's awesome, Keeper. Being able to learn when I can. Yes, Anderson. Life. Life. Good. Yes. Our family is fine. Farm, good. My house. Your house. I would say I, I am also thankful for my house. Anya, what else are you thankful for? Family. Uh, friends. Friends. Very good. Isaiah. And if you're you're out, just say pass. Pass. Oh, I'm food. Amen to food. Caitlin. The sunset. The sunset. Gorgeous. Addison. Pass. Gus. The ability to play sports. Yes, awesome. Gus, you used to just Gus Chase. Food Sorry. and water. What? Food and water. Food and water. Yes. That's good. Anya. All right. Is your mom taking you home? Anything else, Anya? Or are you passing? Um, friends. Friends, Mason. Yeah, pass. Pass. Juliana. Water. Water. Caitlin. Pass. Addison. Uh, yes. Chase. Oxygen. Oxygen. All right. I, I skipped my stuff last time. I am thankful for the freedoms we have in the United States. Anya. Constitution. Anything else? Christianity. Yeah, Jesus. Amen. Mason. Did you pass last time? Uh the amendments, I guess. All right, the Constitution, all the amendments, and the laws and government. Um, uh, Juliana. School. Yes. Yes. America. America. Not America, but America. I love it. No, yes. it's America. Chase. Don't take your mouth shut. Stop. Wait, what? Why? Because. No. Can I talk, please? Chase. The Holy Trinity. All right, the God, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Anya. Communion. All right, communion. All right. So you guys had some more things, right? So there's lots of things that we can be thankful for. Um, right now at church, what am I preaching about this month of October? Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Something of that. Thirty-one days of Halloween, Thanksgiving, gratitude. All right. So I've been talking about gratitude. Um, gratitude and worship, gratitude and faith. Um, this coming Sunday, I'm talking about how gratitude sets us free. That when you can live thankful, contented lives, you are set free from the consumerism that is so much a part of our culture. And so, being thankful is so important. All right, let's look at our memory verse for the day. Thank you guys for listening. Oh, I love this verse. All right, this is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. So who do you think said this word? Uh, Matthew. Jesus. All right, Matthew wrote it, but Jesus is the ones who said it. Therefore, do not blank about tomorrow, for tomorrow will blank about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. All right, well, hold on one second. What, what should the answer be? Worry. Worry. Worry, that's right. All right, I'm going to help this gentleman find the sanctuary. Um, go ahead and open up your catechisms to this petition of the Lord's Prayer. Look at the sanctuary. All right. What page? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Page 100. He just said the petition of the Lord's Prayer. To Matthew 6, 34. No, catechism. Or catechism. What is this condition? Oh, By the way, guys, the answer is worry. Yeah, we know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You want to see the rat that likes me? A what? That's not very nice. You shouldn't say that. Oh, right here, 258. 
Petition in the Lord's Prayer. 258. 258. What? All right. So let's go ahead and turn in your catechism to page 258. Okay. All right. And so when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, what exactly are we asking for? All right. Um, what does this mean? Um, Caitlin, are you willing to read just the what does this mean? No. Chase, would you please yeah. read? What does this mean? What does it mean when we pray? Give us this day our daily bread. God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us and realize this and to receive our daily bread of thanksgiving. All right. So everything that we have comes from who? God. God. All right. And so how should we receive our daily bread? Why do we do our opening activity? Because we want to receive everything with? Gratitude. With gratitude, with thanksgiving. And so part of this petition is to recognize that, that all the good gifts that we have and enjoy of this life come from God. What is included in daily bread? Anya, can you read it? Do you have your catechism open? Oh, I just dropped my catechism. What page are we on? 258. 
258. Can you hear me okay? Is the microphone too far away? Can you hear me okay? Yes. You're a little staticky, but I mean, it's okay. Page 258. Okay. Um, the box. Yes, in the box, what is meant by daily bread? Okay, sorry. Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, and a devout husband or wife. Devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government and good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. All right. So <laughs> daily bread has to do with, with everything, right? Everything that, that we need to support our body and our life. Um, and so that's what we think about when, when, when we think about daily bread. Um, is it just, we're not just praying for Lord, give us this day, our, our, you know, our, our daily bread. Um, sometimes we worry about what's, will we have enough in the future, right? And so we, when we pray this prayer, we're saying, God, give me what I need for today. today. And that can be a really one, be a hard thing um, because we, we like to think so much about, about the future, but the future can be so uncertain. And so we, we just trust in God. And when we think about the future and we kind of get afraid about the future, what are we tempted to do? It kind of is related to our memory verse. When we get anxious about tomorrow, we tend to do something that starts with the letter W, Chase. Worry. worry. That's right. Okay. We worry. Um, what are some things that you guys worry about? Zombie, a cop? No. No, no zombies. What? Your aunts. Yeah, definitely. Now, Anya. Um, I just worry about, like, what goes on in school because I know there have been like a couple more like school, sh school shootings okay and like we've been practicing lockdown drills so today I was just a little like yeah worried. So, just because like it always is kind of scary when you have to practice that stuff even though you know it's pretty non-likely to happen but you never know yeah okay good chase if I'm gonna be Able to go to similar lot Okay, why is that? Um, our school has like no money because they the community voted no on our bill to pass like a levy that would give us money. Okay. Because apparently they didn't understand that if the school goes, the whole community is is gone. Yeah. There's gonna be no people that want to stay there because their kids can't go to school. You got a school? Yeah. And then and then me and all my friends are gonna are gonna have to be split up. Of schools around us like Springfield and Townley and Greenfield and Suffield and the field itself. What about Rose and <clears throat> Rose Township? And we're, I'm probably going to be able to go to Talmadge and everyone else. Dad and you're probably going to go to Springfield because that's yeah. closer to here. So all your friends yes. might have to change. Yeah. And our school is running out of money and we spent a lot of it to fix the roof because of a bad storm that tore up the roof and we're probably going to spend more money so you're worried about that okay yeah and so what's a great thing to do when we're worried pray yep give it to god um because when you worry it, it's it's are you doing any pro anything productive when you worry uh -uh. nope you're not making a squat of difference all right and so we want to give it up to god because we know that each day has trouble on its own. Um, so let's go ahead. And um, in Exodus chapter 16, um, the Israelite, Israelites are, they've left Egypt and they are wandering in the wilderness and they cry out to God, God, we're, we're, we're going to starve. You brought us into this wilderness. Do you really care? We're just going to die. Maybe we should just go back to Egypt and be slaves again. All right. Um, and so what does God send them? <laughs> A savior is not going to help if they're starving. Food. 
He says in food, what kind of food? Um, like All right, so it, it's it's called man, man, manna. Manna literally means in Hebrew, what is it? All right, so the people, God says, go to bed. And in the morning, when you get up, there's going to be this light, dewy substance on the ground. And I want you to go out and gather it. And when the Israelites went out, they looked at it and said, what is it? And, and that was the name that <laughs> stuck to it, manna. And so it, it was a, a, a material that they could grind and make into a, a loaf, into a bread. And so they used this manna to make their bread. They also then complained, we want meat. God, why won't you give us any meat? And so God... Um, <laughs> God sent quail um, into the camp and the people were able to harvest quail and, and they had meat and they had bread. Um, the, the tricky thing was if you try to keep some of the bread for the next day, it got infected with worms and turned bad. And so God says, just take enough for today. Um, for the Sabbath, they could take enough for two days, but God was trying to teach the Israelites you can trust me. I will provide for you. I'm just taking enough for today. Yeah, Chase. So, have you ever figured out what like manna actually is? It was a heavenly food sent by God. After, so there was a little bit. They actually took some of it and put it in a container and put in the Ark of the Covenant. Um, but we don't know where the Ark of the Covenant is, and so we don't really don't know what this material is. I thought you said it goes bad. So in the container by for but God because God says do this, um, God kept that not going bad. All right, just as a testimony of how God provided for his people. Okay. Um, and so daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and the needs of the body. Um, so give us everything that we need to support our, our body. And, and what God had to do was to teach his people that he was, or he is trustworthy. That they could trust God to send, um, bread in the morning, quail at night, and, and they would have plenty to eat. Um, every once in a while, though, the Israelites still complained. They said, we don't have enough water. And so they complained out to God. And, and one time, um, Moses hit a rock and water flowed from it. Another time, God says, just tell the rock to, to give water. And Moses was kind of mad and he hit the rock. And God says, you shouldn't have done that. Um, so, but God provided water for his people, too. So let's go ahead in our Bibles to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4, 8, chapter 8, 1 to 4. In your Bibles, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8. So the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So it's in the front of your Bible, the fifth book. Deuteronomy chapter 8. It's on page 248, verses 1 to 4. Chase, when we're all there, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Um, Chase, can you read those Eight. verses for us? The whole commandment that I command you today... You shall be careful to do. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And be humble you and let your hunger, and he humbled you and let your hunger, and fed you. With man, 
but she did not know, nor did her fathers know, that he might make me known that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth, from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell in these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man who comes his son, the Lord your God is with you. All right, thank you. All right, so. It was really miraculous. The Israelites wandered through the wilderness for 40 years. All right. Think about that. That long just wandering. Their clothes never wore, wore out. God sent manna every morning. God provided quail and water. And with all that walking, their feet didn't get sore. Their sandals didn't wear out. Um, how often do a pair, how long does a pair of shoes last for you guys? A one year, one or two years, depending on how fa fast your feet grow or how much you use the shoes. Are you talking running shoes or normal daily shoes? Life shoes. Athletic shoes go a lot faster, right? Yeah. All right. Um, Anya, you have a question or a thought? My shoes usually last about one and a half years. Like they last me through the school year and then maybe the summer. Yeah. But Socks, because we have such rough floor tiling in our kitchen, only a month. Crocs are only last you a month? Socks. Socks. My okay. parents do not like Crocs. Socks last me about one that, month. Is that what you live on? Crocs and boots? Yeah. I have never worn a pair of Crocs. Same. Isn't your dad at like sessions? Yeah, they're, 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 they're comfortable yeah. all right so what we are praying for here is that again we are praying for physical things to be provided lord send us all the physical things that we need and now let's turn to the new testament to matthew chapter 6 verse 16 on page 1251 Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, on page 1251. All right. God wants to tr trust him so much that we're, we, he, he says this is something good to do. It's kind of unusual, but he asks us to do something unusual. Anya, do you have that passage? Are you willing to read all right, Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Wait, 151 or 251? 1251, page 1251. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Okay, I have it now. All right, thank you, Anya. All right, verse six. All right, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Matthew chapter six, verse sixteen. Oh, oh And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces that the hypocrite no, they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. All right. I'll keep going. I'm sorry. Truly, Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. All right. And so Jesus says, and when you do what? Fast. Does that mean like run really fast? What 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 in the world does that Not word eat. fast mean? Anybody know? Not not eat okay um that's one way to fast and so he says you know sometimes it's good for you to fast um and it, it says you know fast so that your god will see you and and will reward you and so sometimes fasting is a way where we say no to worldly things so that we may more closely focus on the lord okay um in Jesus' day, fasting from food was one of the, the ways that they did. What are some things that might be challenging for you to fast, to say no to using 
um, so that you can focus more on your relationship with God. Mocking All right, mocking people. Excellent answer. That can that would be hard. Okay. What else could you say no to so you can focus more on God? Money. All right. Say I'm not going to spend money. All right. Excess money. Okay. Well, I will only buy what I need. Right. Okay. No extra purchases. No. Um. Games. Right. No, okay. No. I'm going to fast from cussing. Okay. No adultery. No murder. Okay. Okay. So the okay. Those hopefully these adultery murder those aren't things you're you don't you don't need to worry about fasting from those because you're already doing those right. But what are some things that you normally partake in um, that that maybe distract you from your faith or distract you from God? Anger. What if you like took a fast from school? Yeah, uh, you, you still have to work. No, I, I'm thinking what would happen if you said God. I'm going to put away my phone for a day for 24 hours so that I can listen more closely. I'm going to try to read Isaiah I, drummer. I love you. Um, and so to just not play, use your phone for a day. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe you wouldn't even notice um, if you're a gamer to say no gaming, no laptop, no Xbox. All right. For a day. If you like streaming videos, okay, no, none of that. Mm -hmm. All right, for a day. Okay, hunting is actually you go on to to spend time with God anyway. All right, because you know you're not because you're not shooting anything. Exactly. All right. So so there are some things that distract us from God that sometimes if the that becomes your focus, it might be good to step away from it so that you can better focus on God. Does that make sense? So fasting, you know, in ancient times, it was really around food. Um, but there might be other things that you might be able to fast from. Okay. So what exactly are we praying for when we pray for um, daily bread? Daily bread also includes our attitude towards God. And so... Help us, God, to have a good attitude towards you. We are actually called um, to have a thankful attitude towards God. A thankful attitude towards God. Juliana, could you read um, Psalm 100, verse 4, right underneath that? Just that little verse. Give thanks to him and bless his name. All right. Give thanks to him and bless his name. And so one of the attitudes that we want to have is that, that in all circumstances, that we can give God thanks. You know, one of the things, um, I don't know if you've heard too much about the story of Job. Job was a man who, who just was so blessed by God in the Old Testament. Um, but Satan said, God, he only believes in you because you've blessed him so much. And so Satan says, if you just take everything away from him, I don't think he'll believe in you anymore. And God says, okay. And so Satan comes down and all of his, his flocks and animals, they're carried away by, by you know, marauders. Um, the winds blow and all of his kids are having a party and their house collapses and they all die. Um, and then all their camels, and everything is, is taken away. And so he has nothing left, his wife and himself, but everything else is gone, okay? Um, and Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, the Lord gives and lo the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you imagine that after losing everything to still be able to say, Lord, you're good. All right. Um, and so that's what Job, Job was able to do that. <laughs> after that, Satan says, well, why don't you just... Why don't you let me just give him some sores and really make him suffer? And the wife told Job, why, why don't you just curse God and die? But would Job curse God? No. All right. God, Job cried out. He was mad at God. God, why have you let this happen? God, I know you're a good God. Why have you let all these things happen? And, and so eventually God answers Job and basically says, I'm God. You're not. Who are you to question me? Um, you just got to trust me. 
And so ultimately our job is to have a, a thankful attitude towards God in all circumstances. The other thing that, that God wants us to do is that we are to praise God, all right, for all the ways that he has provided already. Um, let's turn back to Deuteronomy chapter 8 on page 248. 248. And let's look at verses 10 to 14. And even though God provided everything for his people, did the people remember and were they thankful for everything that God had done? And so, um, Chase, would you read again? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 10 to 14. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God with the good land he has given. Take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes. Where are you at verse 10? Verse 11. Okay, verse 11. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter. Oh, I'm looking here. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, verse eight. I was looking at verse chapter nine. All right. So you are on what verse are you on right now? Verse eleven. The his statutes. Yeah. Which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herd and flocks multiply and your silver and gold multiply and all that you have is multiplied. And your heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. All right. So take care, because sometimes you can you just think that everything that you have is you've earned it or you deserve it. Um, and so God says, don't don't forget who has given you everything that you have and everything that you are. God has, right? God has given you everything that you are and everything that you have. And so don't forget. So one of the things that God did um, in Exodus 16, verse 32, I, I mentioned that to you, but God had the people just so that they could remember, they took some of the manna and they put it in the Ark of the Covenant. Um, Chase, can you read that? Um, do, Exodus 16, 32. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded let an omer of it be kept throughout your generations, so that it may see the bread which I fed you the wilderness when I brought you out of the land. All right, there you go. So put that in the jar. So verse 31 um, on page 117, um, Addison, you were kind of asking, what is, you know, what was this, this bread like? And it says that Israel, in verse 31, Israel called its name manna, it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. So it was a material that they could then, you know, knead and dough and add water and oil and make bread or make other things of, um, but it was a staple that God provided for them. And very useful. And very useful, right? And I'm sure it was full with, with nu nutrition for the people. It does. Give me a little mana. All right. Any questions, any thoughts on that? Um, let's turn back to your catechism. And, and let's say, um, why do you think, um, why do sometimes we don't get what... If God provides for everyone in all these ways, why do some people lack daily bread? All right. Isaiah, these, uh, that bottom question, um, page 275, I mean, page 262, um, red question 275, the very bottom. Why do some people lack daily bread? Can you read that answer, Isaiah? On page, so we're on page, in your catechism, page 262. There's the red question 275. Why do some people, they don't have what they need? Why are there, why are there some people who are poor 
some people who don't have a home, where there's some people who it looks like maybe God's forgotten. Okay, Isaiah, go and read that. Famine, scarcity, and need are the result of a fallen creation. Human sins, such as greed, callousness, and laziness, all often contribute to these problems. Also, in some the world, unjust or incompetent governmental and economic systems may result in or contribute to the lack of daily bread. And then, indeed, the greatest need to pray for earthly abilities and improvement. Then, most of all, God our daily bread. All right. And so sometimes, some countries, people go hungry and starve because the government holds on to food or doesn't, you know, lets the crops be destroyed. Um, when Stalin took over, you know, and communism took over Russia, over a million people starved to death because there wasn't enough food because of government issues. Um, when Mao took over communist China, um, and again, this is government has all the power, there were some, some shortages and, and almost 2 million people died um, because there wasn't enough. Is it is it because God wasn't with them? No, it's because we live in a fallen and sinful world where sometimes um, there are storms, sometimes there are famines, sometimes there's an abusive government who doesn't provide for its people. And so what's happening in 13 days? Halloween. That's election. After Halloween has come elections. And so um, so we, we pray for a good government. We pray for a good president um, and cabinet and good officials that can make the decisions that bless all people. That's an important thing. All right. Let's turn now in your, we can put your catechism to the way, and let's turn to our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 27. That is... Matthew 6... 1252. 1252. What verse? Uh, Matthew 6, 25 to 27. Oh, this might be okay. okay, so this came from, from up above. This came um, from our memory work. Gus, are you willing to read this? 25, 26, 25, 26 and 27. And the rain fell when the floods came, and many people would be on the house, but it did not fall, because it had been found on the rock. Oh, oh, well, well, Matthew, chapter 6. Chapter uh, 6. Yep, that's right. Okay. Page 1252, right under the heading, Do Not Be Anxious. And I think, is it just 25 and 26? 25 to 27. It starts with, Therefore I tell you. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Do not life more than do not life more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air; they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. For you are more valuable than they. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of your life. All right. So so by being anxious and worrying, does that make your life any better? No. Nope. No. All right. Can, can it be, you know, are there days where I, I'm worried about our government and I'm worried about the future of our country? You bet I am. All right. But that's when I say, all right, Lord, I'm not in control, but you are. And so, Lord, bless, bless the elections. Bless us with good government. Good government that will allow us to work to, to follow Jesus. So do not be anxious about your life, about what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will put on. Life is more than about food and drink, it's more about that. And so we are called to depend on God for everything. Depend, we are called to be dependent. To dependent. Be dependent. All right. 
Um, do flowers worry about when their next rainfall is coming? No. Do the birds worry about where their next meal is coming? Could possibly. No. All right. And so God says, in the same way that the creation knows that God will take care of it, um, we too can trust God. The other thing that God wants us to have is God wants us to be, well, let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 13. Philippians 4, 10 to 13. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. I'm in Revelation. I'm pretty sure it's very far. 584. Yeah, I love 1584. 15. Oh, it's quite a short. 84. Rejoice in the Lord always. Is that the first? No, verses 10 to uh, 13. I rejoice in the Lord. Yeah, but rejoice in the Lord. Chase, you got that? Can you read for us? So page 1584. I guess Mason or Anya, do you guys want to read it all or are you guys good? Mason, you want to read Anya or you're good? You're good? All right. Chase. Um, Philippians 4, 10 to 13. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have, received, you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him straight. All right. So we are called to live with contentment. All right. Contentment. To, to live with contentment. Uh, or contented with contented. With content. With con contented. Content, content hearts. All right. What, is, what does it mean to be content? Happy with what you have and grateful. All right. So just just happy with what you have. Okay. Um are what when you look at the world around us, is it easy be to, to be content with what you have? Okay. Well, Addison and Caitlin, you're saying no. Why why are you saying no? Because I know a lot of people that aren't content and like they want different things, like they want a better iPhone and like other things. Okay. All right. What about you, Addison? Why why do you say it's hard to be content? Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. Isaiah, what do you think? There's always more you can get. All right. There's always something more. Chase. Um, diseases and death. Okay. So sometimes when, when you see suffering around you, that can say, I don't want this. Right? I don't want that. It's hard to be content. Um, we live in a day and age where, where people have said, I'll be happy if I just have a little bit more. more, right? Just a little bit more, then I'll be happy. But then that more goes further. Right. And, and, and so if you set your goal on if I just get a little bigger house, a little nicer car, a little newer phone, um, a little bit... Nicer clothes. Um, yeah, I bought these clothes. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, whatever, whatever, you know, nicer, you know, what else, what else do you guys is important better to you guys? Toys as teenagers? For better toys, better shoes, okay, better hairdo, oh. <laughs> better I, looks, okay, better I'm looks. Right. I feel targeted. I just have my done today. <laughs> it looks very nice, Madison. I, I did, was not hoping that you at all. All right. Um, better, status. better status. All right. Um, I know I was talking with one of my kids and, and we were just talking about how in school we have, I think our family has a lot, but she's like, there's a lot of other kids that have a lot more. And she, I asked, is it really that noticeable? And Emma said, yeah, there, there's just, there's, there's a lot of rich kids here in Talmadge. Um, and so sometimes that can be hard to be content. Yeah. All right, when um, you don't have as much. And so Paul tells us the secret to being content. What is the secret 
Oh, uh, I can't separate. Separate. All right. What does he say at the end of this? He says, I can do everything through yeah, him. Who strengthens me. Who strengthens me. And so the secret to being content is, is to trust. I can't I trust Oops. in Jesus. Okay. Um, to trust in Jesus. And, and this is really hard. We live in a world that where, where you're really taught, um, yeah, you're where whatever you media you listen to, there's always commercials. All right. Yeah. Um, wh whether you're on Instagram or TikTok, you see nice houses and nice stuff and people who have all these lives that seem to be all together. And we think, well, if I was just more like them, then I could be happy. Um, and, and I gotta tell you, each one of you is pretty amazing. All right, you are an amazing person created by God, and God has a plan for you. Emma! And God has a plan for you. All right, Isaiah, you'll just take all your stuff and fire you off in my office. So Isaiah is playing some percussion to someone for the choir for church this Sunday. Who's that? My daughter, Emma. Oh, She's God. a freshman. Emma, this is Allison. I, I was, it was going to come to the pumpkin thing, but she's a little youth there. I said, well, Addison's there. I don't know who Addison is. So, Addison, Emma, Emma, Addison. Technically, I was forced to go because of my brothers. Okay. Wow. Well, that's the way Emma would have felt too. I was too, but I did not. So, anyway. Um, so, Christ and Jesus. So, just as we need physical bread to support our bodies, we also need spiritual, spiritual bread for our souls. And so, both kind of in keeping Deuteronomy 3 and Matthew 4, 4, Jesus says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And so what is what is better than bread? What is better than food? Every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. God's word. And, and so where can we find every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord? The Bible. Da, 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 the Bible. And so we need, the Bible nourishes our soul. The Bible points us to Jesus. It gives us everything that we need um, to support our faith, to support our lives um, in God's word. But we also need worship, don't we? We need we need fellow believers. Um, one of the things I hear a lot of people say, well, well, I can just have Jesus on my own. I don't need to be a part of a church. Okay. Um, do we need to be a part of a church? It's important, all right, to be connected as the body of Christ. And then in John 6, verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. life. Okay. He who comes to me will never grow hungry and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Okay. Is he talking about a physical hunger or is he talking about a spiritual hunger? It's, it's, spiritual. it's, it's a spiritual. Right? Will God take care of us? Yes. But even if we die, da, 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 what do we have in Christ? We like. All right, and where will we live? In, in heaven. And so when we trust in Jesus, we have everything that we need in this world and the world to come. And so this main point, um, faith is asking, trusting, and depending on God for all of our physical needs and living with an attitude of thanksgiving, dependence, and contentment. We use Matthew and Deuteronomy a lot. Yeah, yeah. In in this lesson, we did. We were talking about manna and God. And, and, and. All right. Do you guys want to just push pull push no, through? No, break, break. All right, we're gonna take a break. All right. Yeah. We'll take a ten minute break, and I'm so hungry. we'll come back together at ten thirty seven. Ten. Seven thirty seven, and ten minutes. I don't want to stay here for another three hours. Well, it'll be so much fun. Oh, I have to eat, though. And I'm not you know, the youth are doing a lock-in in a couple of weeks. So, stop recording.